three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday, the February the 3rd. And today I am delighted because I have a very um, special new friend. His name is Aaron Robles. Um, by the way, if this is a, your first time tuning in, welcome. I'm Michelle Quay. I'm a confidence and leadership coach. And I help women warriors supersize their talent and see every beauty in every flaws. So if this is your first time joining me, welcome. Be sure to like my page and follow me every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I bring you a guest who have a really inspiring transformational journey. They overcame something that you might be struggling with right now, and they are here to inspire you in taking actions, and hopefully you will feel the same to hear their journey. So today I have a guest. Um, his name is Aaron Robles. Aaron is a very curious entrepreneur looking for ways to help others to tap into their potential and become the best version of themselves through business. As a Mexican immigrant coming to US as a baby and currently DACA recipient, we can talk about that later, Aaron's journey as both American and entrepreneur has been a very complex one with limited opportunity. His business, Founder Spark, was created to help entrepreneurs from all backgrounds develop the skills to launch and grow their business. So without further ado, let's bring Aaron on so that he can share his journey with us. Welcome, Aaron. Um, hello, I'm so excited that we're finally here. I know, uh, we, we connected during the pandemic, huh? Like a lot of people were struggling, but here we are, we're on the same Zoom link because of one single phone call. <laughs> yeah, and it's incredible because I think once we connected for that first time, we just felt the magic. So I'm super excited to be here and keep having conversations with you. Well, thank you so much for coming. So I usually like to start by asking, you know, so what's your story about? Yeah, so my story takes many formats, but I've gotten pretty good at kind of distilling it down. I mean, pretty much, um, like you said, first generation Mexican immigrants, me and my parents came here when they were very young, early 20s, I was eight months old. So we've been in the US for most of my life. And we came to where we are now, Fort Wayne, Indiana, when I was about four. So I've been in the US for over 28, 29 years now. Uh, grew up just like a normal kid anywhere else, very Americanized. And it wasn't until I got a little older that I realized that I was different. You know, when I went to go get that license for the first time, when I went, went to go get that job. And that's kind of when I realized the paperwork just was, wasn't matching up. So at that point, my story was then trying to overcome the lack of documentation I had in the U.S., even though I had been here pretty much my entire life. So that has kind of propelled me into this world of entrepreneurship and business and all of these things. So it's interesting how, how you um, kind of perceive yourself. I, I wasn't any different. And then suddenly you see on the paper, wait, what do you mean I'm Mexican? I'm not, you know? So what, did, what does that feel like when you first realize that you are different? Well, at first it was confusing and almost like hard to believe because, you know, even though I was very conscious of my Mexican heritage, I learned English in school when I was in kindergarten. So I knew I was Mexican, but it wasn't until I was older when you need documentation to get a driver's permit, to get a job. Once you start filling things out when you're an excited teenager to be independent, that's when I went and it just wasn't working anymore. Like the, the, the paperwork, when I went to get my learner's permit with my mom, they're like, oh, you need this, this and that. And I was like, oh, well, I don't have that. And what you have to remember is that before it wasn't like that. After 9-11, the rules changed completely and it became more strict with immigrants. So even though I'd been here pretty much my entire life because of 9-11 and people tightening up on immigration, things that immigrants were able to do before, I wasn't able to do. So it was super jarring and just super confusing because for the first time, I started to see what the difference was between me and everyone else that I was growing up with. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's interesting because uh, one of the things that was in your bio was the DECA, right? And, mm -hmm. and I believe last year the DECA was a really big um, thing that was going around because of the 
the previous administration and all that challenges that we were facing. So, and for people who's not familiar with the DACA and being an immigrant, what does it, what are some of the challenges that you were facing? So what, what DACA was created for, it was an executive um, order by the Obama administration in 2012. And basically what it said is any child of an immigrant that was brought here as a child, right? So I didn't make the conscious decision to do it. My parents did. They weren't able to live a productive life in the US. They weren't able to drive, work, do any of those things. So this was put in place as a temporary safe haven to say, look, since you're living here and since this is the only country you know, we're going to do a temporary ability to have you be able to work, drive, and a few of these things. It's only good for two years, and I have to renew every two years because the idea was once Congress passed some permanent laws on immigration, then that would go away. But since 2012, that hasn't happened. So there's, uh, I think, over 700,000 people in the U.S. who are currently under DACA that are renewing every year. A lot of them now are homeowners, have kids, jobs. So um, it's a temporary situation for people that have been here their entire life. And I'm sure it stirred up a lot of frustration as things are putting on hold. And then um, it was during the time you had you had you started the company, right? Um, tell us a little bit about Founder Spark. When did you start the company? Yeah, so I had been pretty much because of my immigrant situation, I became an entrepreneur from a super young age, starting with a graphic design gig when I was 16. And up until my adulthood, always been working with small businesses, always been a business owner, because I had to be again, I couldn't get a job, but I could make my own company. So that kind of got me on that trajectory. And after years of being a designer, web developer, social media guy, photography, all sorts of things, my experience was the same with every entrepreneur I met. Most of them didn't know what they were doing. They were nervous, they were scared, they didn't have any support and they were just trying to figure it out, right? I mean, you and, know, you and I know what that's like. So everyone was dealing with that. So it came out of a conversation. Um, there was a guy, Chris Hively, co-founder of MapQuest. He's with Techstars now. He came in and gave a presentation on how to make our city more vibrant and opening for entrepreneurs. So I asked him the question. I was like, how can I, someone who's still young, still figuring it out, help for this? And he said, you know, you have one more day's worth of experience than the person who started the day after you. So that really changed my perspective because it showed me that mentorship isn't up here and down here. It's literally all across the board. So that idea came and we put that together. I, all I did was start an event. It wasn't even a business, anything. I just said, what if I got all of my friends who are entrepreneurs, put them in a room together, bought pizza, bought drinks, and then just saw what happened, like the networking. And 16 people showed up and that was February or March of 2018. And now, I mean, three years later, we have an entire company that's dedicated to helping entrepreneurs in all of these different ways. So that's kind of the start of just connecting and knowing that communities help each other um, be better. It, it, it's crazy how, as you mentioned it, you know, it, it's like Im unimaginable for someone to start a company because I know a lot of the people in the audience, they're struggling with creating their online presence, creating content and doing this and that and doing networking after the pandemic, you know, because there's right. still a lot of places that you can't really do in person. So everything relies on the Zoom. And just by what you what you said about just buying people pizza, invite them into the same room. And here it is. It's a company. I, that was just not imaginable. Yeah, and it's crazy because a lot of that same story you hear across all of these things, they started with an idea and then they decided, oh, this could be a company. You know, we had that first event February or March of 2018. The company didn't get formed until 2019, a year later, once we said, oh, we can do something with this. But I think anyone who starts with a passion and an idea that then wraps the business around it usually has a very clear sense of their why and why they're doing it versus people who start trying to make money and then try and connect the passion to it. So it was just a very natural progression and it's given me a ton of fulfillment because we're running a business, but we're doing it in a way that's connected to something I'm super passionate about, which makes it way easier on those really, really hard days that we all have. Mm -hmm. so, so I wanna go back to your journey a little bit because mm -hmm. you had a clear sense of why you wanted to start the company and how you're gonna, how you're gonna work on it. But um, you know, for a lot of people, and especially immigrants, they may find themselves in the same situation where they, they're not sh quite sure how to begin. Mm. So where do they start? 
Well, I, I think what it comes down to was for me and a lot of other people, what's that passion? What's the thing that you want to do in the world? And for me, it was never about making money. It was about how do I make the world a better place? So how do I help more immigrants become entrepreneurs? Like I became an entrepreneur. How do you help more women, more people of color, you know, more people across the spectrum of, of America and who we are. So that was my mission. And that's something that I could work on every single day. And because a lot of people pulled me up when I was 16, 17, 18, trying to figure it out, people gave me advice. They gave me help and they gave me connections. So this was my way of giving that back. So with anyone who's trying to start a business, whether you're a minority woman, person of color, whatever it is, it's like, find that thing that you think would make the world a better place and then start doing it right. Don't form the, don't try and form the business today, but just say, start experimenting, going out and doing things. And I think from there, things start to connect. And like you and I were, were talking about earlier, until you go out there and just start doing something, you start making those connections, but sitting down and thinking about it for months and months and years, it's never going to help. Sometimes you just got to go out there and do it. Yeah. And you do it by uh, learning by doing. And, and you, you learn, you, the more that you do, the more that you learn what's working, what's not working, how do I exactly. change this? Exactly. Yeah. Right. And something that a lot of people are scared of is failure, right? I mean, we're all scared of failure. What you learn as an entrepreneur and as someone who does a lot is that it's not one failure that takes you out. It is like multiple failures. If you're failing and losing every single day for a year, you're probably not going to make it. But one failure, one setback, those things are, are, are tiny. So where a lot of people say, well, what if this doesn't work? Well, they don't explore that fear. We always like explore and, and do our vision boards for the positive. We never do that for the negative. So if you try this thing and you say, what if it fails? Well, then answer that question. What if you fail? What happens? Oh, it's usually not that bad. You know, when I went, um, when I left my last job and started uh, my company, it was very much what happens if I fail? And then I sat there and I explored because I was in my apartment. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any money to pay my bills. And I was going to start a company. Like, why would I do that? But when I asked myself, well, what happens if I fail? Well, I'm going to not be able to afford my bills. What does that mean? Well, if I can't afford my bills then I have to move back home, what if I have to move back home? Well, that means I get to live with my family who is supportive. Um, I don't have to pay bills anymore. I, my mom will help me with my laundry. And because we're Mexican, I'm going to get a home cooked meal every single day of the week. So, Your mom is gonna I, you. <laughs> yeah. So even though I was nervous when I really explored what failure looked like to me, I had a great situation to fall back on. And I mean, I've been in that situation living with my mom for a few years and I am well rested. I am happy and I'm able to build my business in a way where I don't have to stress out about money anymore. So even though in my mind, that was a failure that scared me from doing it. Once I explored what that failure looked like, I realized the upside was way bigger than the downside. And my failure, my, my failing was better than a lot of other people had in terms of what their options were. So once you explore that failure, sometimes you realize it's not as bad as you think it is. Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't agree with more with you more. And and one of the things that I suggested people to do during the pandemic was, um, you know, if you're struggling with paying rent, you know, why not moving back with your parents? And I think what you brought up, and I see this a lot in a lot of business owner, entrepreneur, and you know, just everyday people, um, <clears throat> is that when we think about failure, there's that initial um mindset of, you know, I, I don't want to be judged. So here right. I am, if I'm 40, 40 or 30, 35 years old, I don't want to move back to home and be with yeah. my parents because I don't want to be seen as someone who really hasn't grown up yet. Right. And, and, and that's a, a realistic struggle. I am now approaching a few st steps in life where I'm 29, I turned 30 this year, and I'm literally about to be a 30 year old entrepreneur who lives in his mom's basement. I do not want to be that. And for a long time, that was my fear because what are people going to think? But I mean, at the end of the day, other people's opinions don't pay your bills. Like you have to understand the path you're on. And something that I, I saw very recently that I loved is like, you know, where I'm at is I'm slingshotting. I have to step back and put myself in a position to be able to take off. If I was, because I can get a job, I have tons of, my resume is strong. I can go get a job where I have to work on someone else's dream from nine to five and get a house and get a mortgage and get a car. I can do all of those things. But if I'm there, I'm going to be stuck there. I'm not going to be able to move because my time is gone. So what I'm doing is I'm sacrificing 
having a home right now. I'm sacrificing living on my own and, and, and having all these things that other peers of mine have. But I now have the flexibility with my time and energy to create something that in a few years is going to springboard me to where I want to be. And that's, I think, something really important. You have to know where you want to go because different paths are for different people. If you want to work that nine to five and have a nice car and a nice home and live a, a totally normal life, that's 100% fine. And that's what you should do. But I think a lot of us are starting a business because we don't want things in the traditional sense. We want something different. And there's always a trade-off. If you want something magnificent and great and whatever success is to you, you're going to have to sacrifice other things in order to get there. And I think we all have to ask ourselves, what are we willing to sacrifice to get where we want to get? Once you come up with those answers and you have that piece, you're calm. Because I know where I'm going and I know what I have to do to get there. But if you don't have that clarity, it does get very confusing. So mm -hmm. What was your mom's reaction when you told her that you're going to start your own business and you're not going to have this nine to five job? Well, the great thing is that, you know, both of my parents being immigrants, um, the, we always came here for a better life. I always say my from the very beginning have always been extremely supportive. So it's really nice because when I was to do whatever I wanted with business and they got to see me do that so when I told my mom that I was going to just jump in this she was all in my parents have always been super supportive and said whatever you want to do you do so that's a really nice advantage that I have of having super supportive parents that have always been there to do whatever I need them to do to support me so super grateful for that because mm -hmm. I know a lot of, um, you know, uh, Latino family or Latin family or uh, Asian family, they, they usually have that under, under that, you, you fit under that umbrella of, you know, my, I want my son to be a doctor or, so, or a lawyer, you know, someone who has a title in order to mm -hmm. be considered successful, especially if I brought them here in this country. When you work with the clients, do you see that a lot in terms of how they're struggling internally? Oh yeah, I mean, there is a huge onset of pressures from parents, wives, husbands, significant others, siblings. I mean, we're pressured by an entire society that says, here's how we're supposed to do things, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not set up in America to go out and do things our own way. You go to school, then you go to college, then you get a job, and then you save up for your 401k and you get a family. Like, there is this traditional path. So it's really hard because when you say, I'm going to do things completely different in my way, then you start getting pushback. And sometimes that pushback comes from people that are close to you, not because they don't want you to succeed, but because they're nervous about what you're doing, right? They, would, they could never do that. So they're concerned for you. And that's why Founder Spark, you know, those monthly meetings were so beneficial. Our height, we got to over 100 people coming up every single month. Why? Understood what you were doing. You were surrounded by people who didn't say, oh, you shouldn't do that. You should quit that and go to school. And they were like, oh, let me see how I can help you get to that goal. So the community of other people who were taking risks and understood where you were going and were supportive was integral to what our growth was because that's what we need. We need to be surrounded by people who understand and won't tell us not to, but will instead help us figure out how to do it. What, what is community for you? What does that mean, community? Oh, that's a, that's a big question, but uh, <laughs> hey, I think- you don't come to the show. I let you easy way out, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, you're making me work for it. But I think community is just, like-minded people who are all striving to help make each other better. You know, we don't even have to have the same goal of what we want to do, but it's kind of like, I see where you want to go. How can I help you get to that path? And you come into this whole concept of not loving people the way you want to be loved, but loving people the way they want to be loved. How can I not set you on a path that's going to take you where I want to go, but help you empower yourself to go to the path that you want to go? Because guess what? Some people should go to college and get really great eight, 10 year degrees. I was not cut out for, I do not like college. It was not something that was fun for me. So putting me, take risks of being entrepreneurs and doing those things. So it's like, how do you find a place for everyone in your community to play the role that they're going to be happy to play the role that they're going to thrive and do best at. And I think at the end of the day, my life mission outside of all of this is how can I help everyone make the most out of their experience on this earth, 
right now I do that through business, but I think it's something we can all take a part of, of how do we help each other realize our success and our place in the world. Mm -hmm. I love the sense of, you know, having a, a community where people are striving for the same mission and they have trying to reach the same goal. I think it can also be on a smaller scale on the individual level as entrepreneur, you, you begin to realize that you are one person and one person cannot do it all. Oh, yeah. That right? is the <laughs> biggest, that is the biggest thing. One of the, the people that we in interviewed um, Elizabeth Sutton, her theme was learning to let go. And she shared her story on how she always wanted to prove to people that she could do it. So when she ran her business, even though she had employees, she would always just do everything herself because it wasn't that she didn't trust her employees to do it. It was that she felt like she had something to prove to the world. So then she ended up getting diagnosed with stage three cancer and she had to get surgery and she had to go through a whole recovery and all of a sudden she couldn't run the business anymore. So she ran into this issue where now she had to have all these people who didn't know how to run a business for her do it. So her, what she learned of it was you need to be able to have your business run itself without you there. Because if something happens, if you get hit by a bus and your business is dead, you're not gonna have anything to come back to. Or if you get sick or, you know, when we talk about pandemics and COVID and things like that. So mm -hmm. setting yourself up to, not only get advice on how to run your business, but also have those safeguards of saying, if I want this to be a big thriving business that works without me, you have to start setting that up from the early on. And I think a lot of people just because they want to prove that they can do it, they don't set themselves up for long-term success in terms of bringing other people in, talking to mentors. And yeah, you're right. I, on any week, talk to 10 to 15 people about all of these different things because it just, it helps you flow and it helps you create I think a more sustainable business, it helps you get out of your own head because sometimes we're too hard on ourselves. So constant communication within communities is critical. You always have to have a circle of people that you trust and are gonna be there to support you. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's important to realize that, you know, um, I, I think one of the real struggle initially as an entrepreneur is you start from scratch. And when you're mm -hmm. starting from scratch, it's difficult to outsource a lot of these tasks. So graphic designer, web designer, uh, social media manager, right? All these uh, uh, different uh, talents that you really rely, you can really rely on other people to help you. But initially, um, when you first start out, it's really difficult to get all the resources. Yeah, no, and that's a lot of what we find, right? I always say a mechanic is a great mechanic doesn't mean he knows how to do customer service, do invoicing, do his taxes, do social media. There is an entire structure of things around our craft that we need to learn how to do. And that can be extremely difficult because what, do you go to college? Do you do it yourself? I don't have $2,000 a month to pay for an agency to do that work for me. So a lot of people end up in a really stuck place of they don't know how to do it, but they don't have enough money right now to pay someone else to do it. So they're stuck. And I mean, for us, that's something we saw super early on. And it kind of leads into what we're working in now, which is Edge Academy. So a solution for how do we help people figure these things out? today so that they can start running a better business tomorrow. So exactly what you're saying, a ton of people run into. So tell us a little more about the Edge Academy. Yeah, so Edge Academy in its form, one way or the other, has been in my mind for a few years now. And ever since pandemic hit, we've kind of had to restructure that to not be a five-year plan, but a let's do it right now. So Edge Academy, as it exists right now, is a program under FounderSpark. Um, they are monthly courses that we do every single month. Right now, we have one on social media, discovering your target market, accounting 101, as well as healthy finances. So these are Zoom courses taught by an industry expert focused on helping entrepreneurs. It's a three-hour course that gives you from the very beginning um, what these things are, how to run them, and doing that on a budget. So they run every single month, and our goal is to help you learn the things you need to learn to run a business in a more effective way today. So everything we teach you, you can put into practice the very next day. I love it. And I know, I know you brought something very special for my audience. So tell us what is it? Yes. So for everyone who is watching this either live or, or later, um, we're offering all of our courses for 30% off of the total uh, rate. And um, we have a code, which I think you're going to put in here. It's perfectly normal 30, all caps. Um, that code, when you go to our website, founders Founderspark.com, 
you'll be able to enter that code and get a discount for our courses. Because for me, I want to make this accessible for as many entrepreneurs as possible, or really anyone who's trying to get a better understanding of how to maybe someday run a business. I love that. So guys, I just put it into the chat box or the chat window. So it's 30% from the Edge Academy course. And if you type in perfectly normal 30 and the, go to the website, if you put that in, you get a 30% discount on the course. And, you know, I'm always thinking about moving forward, moving ahead of us. And especially coming out from the pandemic, you know, what do you want to do with your business? I think this is a great opportunity for us to really take it and if you want to level up, you really have to start thinking about how you do that. And Aaron has a perfect solution for that. Yeah, and I think something that's very important for us to consider, especially now with this pandemic, a lot of people are realizing that job is not as stable as they thought it was, right? And they're getting a lot of this time at home. And I always tell people, starting a business does not mean you go file the LLC tomorrow and get started. It means you start doing research. You start developing your idea. You start figuring out how would I do this? So right now is the best time to start investing in yourself. It is more accessible than ever to start a business. We can do everything online. Everyone knows how to use Zoom. So I always encourage people, if you want to get started today, it doesn't mean you have to launch it today, but start putting the work in because the more you figure out, the more excited you're going to be the more excited you are, the more momentum you're going to get. So I always encourage people start exploring. And I think these courses are going to help people's uh, anxiety level go from here to here once you kind of figure out what some of those basics are. Yeah, sometimes having just having that clear step of like, what is my next step? How do I move from here? It's really important for a lot of people. Um, it alleviate a lot of fear that we, we were experiencing in uh, last year, you know, over the last 10 months. Um, it also gives you some idea of how do you want to expand or grow your own business. So absolutely essential. Right. So what I'll say also on top of this is anyone who wants to reach out to me personally and talk to me about becoming an entrepreneur, I am more than happy to schedule a Zoom call, a phone call, anything that they need for them to actually just talk to me and say, hey, I'm scared as hell. I want to do something, but I don't know how. Help me out. I will make the time to help anyone who wants to start a business be able to do that. So anyone who's watching this can feel free to reach out to me as well. And I'm happy to guide you through that journey. And I am putting uh, uh, Aaron's contact into the chat, in the comment. So be sure to click the link and follow him. Uh, Aaron, I know you're really passionate about, you know, helping others. So this is a question I usually uh, ask a lot of my audience, my, my speakers. What do you believe the world need? Mm, man, you know, what I think we all need is a little bit more empathy. I think we could all use to put ourselves in the shoes of someone else. Um, I've always had this ideology that at the end of the day, we all just want to be happy and we all just want to be safe and be able to put our kids to bed in a, in, in a great world. So how we get there, a lot of people disagree on and that's where we see issue. But I think that if we stay focused on the mission and what the goal is and are a little more empathetic to why people are who they are, because I mean, you know that because of our life experiences, it shapes us. Some of us are dealing with things that other people could never imagine. So once you put a little bit of empathy out in the world, I think we'll all be a little softer, a little more understanding of each other, and hopefully get to where we want to get together. I love that word, empathy. And it's funny how you brought up empathy, because that that's like my word of the week is mm, empathy. Perfect timing. <laughs> it's like you read my mind. And <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. Empathy is really, um, it, it, we don't have to go through the same exact experience, but somehow we are related regardless of uh, the color of our skin, our religious mm -hmm. belief, you know, anything that we um, have, what we grew up with, we don't have to be the same. You and I can be very different, but I understand you because I had similar experience where I felt the yeah. same thing. I was struggling the same thing and therefore was sitting here in the same room holding space for each other. And here I am, you know, I want to serve yeah. you. I want to help. And I would say we are better because we are different. But what am I, I'm a big social guy. Like I, I'm a social butterfly. I love hearing people's stories who are different than me. I love hearing the experiences because you can't go out there and live at all, but you can connect with other people and say, how can your experiences teach me to be a better person? 
And how can my experiences teach you to, so if we were to all sit down and just talk to each other who are, you know, different than us, have different ideology, different experiences, I think we would all find that it is incredibly enriching. And, you know, I would never want to be consistently in a room with a bunch of people that are just like me. You know, I also learn so much from people who aren't entrepreneurs. So like all of these cross sections of people in all of these ways, I think just build a better collective experience. So I'm all on board for always meeting tons of different people, no matter where they're coming from and figuring out how I can learn from them and them from me. Mm -hmm. I can tell you already, you're, you are a social butterfly. <laughs> yeah, this, this whole pandemic thing's really thrown me off, but uh, we're adjusting. Yeah, yeah. Any, any last word for our audience? Well, first off, for anyone out there listening, whether you want to be an entrepreneur or not, doesn't really matter. I'll always encourage people to go out there and figure out what makes them happy, right? If it's a business, great. If you need a nine to five, great. If you want to move, great. There is a way to live the life that you want to live and it is worth chasing. You should not have to settle for the life that you were given or the life that you think you have to live. There is always an opportunity to go out there and truly be happy. And I think a lot of us try and tell ourselves we're happy when we know there's so much more out there for us. So I would encourage anyone go out there, start living. And we have a few short years on this earth, make the most out of it and work towards building a super happy and fulfilling life. And on top of that, you know, that's, that's it. I think that's what we're here for, to live the best life we can live and share our gifts with the world. I love that. Yay. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> we did it. We did it. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's been oh, a pleasure yeah. speaking with you. And you and I are friends now. There's no other option. We're going to stay in touch. I, I didn't think that wasn't like even a question. That was not right. a question at all, period. Right. <laughs> this is where love the that. tribe is being formed. Um, thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much jo for joining us today on Wednesday Live Coffee Talk. This is a show where I bring uh, love, courage, and connection to you every Wednesday at 8 o'clock Pacific time. Um, if you haven't already done so, be sure to visit my website, elevatelifecoaching.org. There's tons of resources and videos like this that will inspire you to stay, start taking some action. And one thing that I will mention uh, before we go is that I am offering a mastermind group that will cultivate authenticity. So if you're interested, shoot me an email, send me a DM, and, and I love to connect with you. So without further ado, Happy Wednesday, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of your uh, Wednesday with inspiration, love, courage, and start going out there and making connection. So thank you love so much it. for watching. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you.